Lancia Delta HF Integrale 16 valve, produced only in left hand drive and heading out of the meet. Of the cars all parked up then, first off Riley Elf, of course mini based car, we're known quite well for being the mini with a boot, obviously yes minis do have a boot space, but it's not as big as the Elf because of course the Elf is much extended, more luxurious mini so you got leather seats in there, a walnut dashboard and really as far as minis go it's that's kind of all the luxury you get on the interior to be honest you get a few nicer switches and of course classical styled Riley grill does look a little bit different some people are not quite as mad on the elf as you know if they prefer the mini but then arguably you got people who are not such big fans of the mini but really love the elf of course it does have a sister car as well the Wolseley Hornet and they look quite similar. The walls leave cooler though because it's got the light up front badge and I like that. The Ford Probe is a car that you don't see that much of anymore in the UK. I don't think it was a huge seller in the first place. It's only quite unique amongst cars sold in the UK but it's got a floating roof line. And a bar across the back for the light sort of makes it all look like it goes literally all the way across whereas some cars have it a bit more broken up have a look in here quite a simple laid out dashboard very typical of Ford of the time this car's NREG so mid 90s but it does have pop-up headlights which is really cool personally I prefer the Puma to the Probe it's a sort of smaller more sporty version of Ford cars but I don't think it's a bad looking thing personally certainly very unique 16 valve engine under the bonnet. I like the way also that the door handles are quite well integrated in, so it looks a bit more flush. And you've got three spoke wheels. What's not to like? Ivan Neatel, we've seen this at Radwood more recently. Car owned by the uh, lady from Bangers and Cash, Sarah Crabtree. Don't think she's actually on that show anymore. But this is her car, Morris Etel. All of the brown paint. Oh, I need to have a look in there, do I? Look <laughs> wow. That is really lush. And the smell, of course. <laughs> it's really strong, isn't it? Look at the lushness, more like. Oh, don't start fighting, you two. <laughs> well, I like the little switch panels, actually. They're quite similar to the ones in the Mini. That's well, nice. And the supporter of uh, Austin Legra Agatha as well. Not many cars these days are sold in brown, but this is quite a popular colour at the time. This was used on many British Leyland vehicles especially. Things like the Mini Travellers, the Clubman especially. But I like how also they support other YouTubers and I quite like the little graphics they've got on here. Might have to look at getting something like that done for a Millie with a caravan. I think that would be quite cool. You can be forgiven for thinking this is a caterer. It isn't, it's a Westfield. Similar sort of concept. It's only based around the original Lotus 7 or Super 7. Mini switch gear in there. I think possibly leather seats or vinyl at the very least. Quite luxurious in there really for a small kit car, but this is a Westfield. I think my uncle actually had one of these back in the uh, 80s, 90s, possibly. Maybe even a bit earlier than that. Very popular little alternatives to a catering though. The logo is quite nice. Try and show you it upside down. If not, we'll go around the front. See more indicator lights from a Mini. I think these are from an Escort Mark VI as well. Not quite sure, but I think they are. It's only a car that uses a lot of bits and pieces from other vehicles. Next to the Westfield. Aston Martin V8, it's an automatic. Apparently it's a saloon type body, although really it's a bit more of a coupe. Obviously glorious green paint, seven litre engine, 305 horsepower, I love the badging. Got a slightly gold patina to it. 
really like that. Twin exit exhaust. Of course, keeps that very traditional Aston Martin front end. I think this is the first Aston Martin model to have the 7 litre V8 engine. It's a gorgeous looking thing. Love these cars, always have done. And this one's just in absolutely top condition. Really love this. And now we're on to the first of the minis here. There's quite a lot because uh, Carnada the guy organising this particular meet. He's a big mini fan. He's got a classic mini himself. So naturally there's quite a few here. This little Cooper. Lovely little leather steering wheel. Thought about getting one of those myself for my mini but I ended up going with the wood rim wheel instead. Thought it suited it a little bit better. Union Jack roof. Obviously Mini Cooper is K-Reg, so this has been modified to look a bit like a sports pack. I don't think these sports packs actually went into production until about 1995, 96-ish, so quite heavily modified, but it does look good. I think the uh, Cooper sports pack always do look good, especially with the wider arches. This, however, is a genuine one. So it even says Cooper Sport there, which I know is just a badge. You can easily get badges, but this is a genuine one, S-Reg. 13 inch mini light wheels. Again, I think those wheels look really good. The interior as well. It's changes a lot over time, doesn't it really, compared to the original minis of the 1950s. It's even changed quite a lot compared to mine from the very early 90s. Of course, this wasn't the top of the range mini at the time. Sunroof, leather steering wheel, obviously wooden dashboard, so giving it a little bit more luxury like the uh, Riley Elf did back in the 60s. Very nice, not so easy to change the steering wheel on these because they did have airbags installed. Also, it had a bit more strengthening in the doors for side impacts because safety had taken hold quite significantly by the time these cars were produced. The world had changed, safety was a much bigger factor. Little R Edge Mini, I would imagine Mini Cooper says it there. Steering wheel suggests it is rather. Glorious little thing. Like that, that's uh, on the interior and rear view mirror that's basically something that's sort of come over from the Volkswagen scene quite like the little phone mount a little bit different I've got a bang, uh, magnetic one in mine horn buttons also on the steering wheel in these later models whereas mine's on the end of the indicator stick this is a 1989-ish mini made to look quite significantly like an earlier model looks like it's based around a Mark III, so it's got 10 inch wheels, as standard it would have had 12, I imagine, yeah, it's got the Cooper S disc brake conversion, bucket seats, even got the phone mount as well on the windscreen, but yeah, it looks really basic in there compared to what it would have been as standard, but meant to look a bit more rally-like, I'm guessing, judging by the Italian job style spotlights on the front. This Mini Advantage, one of the many Minis which had special editions back in the late 80s and early 90s. Blaupunkt cassette player radio down there. That's sweet, love that. But yeah, you can see how basic the Mini really is. This car doesn't look like it's really been changed a lot from standard, but I like this. This is a boot board, which naturally goes in the boot, would you be surprised to hear? But it's got little legs on it, so it means that you can use it as a table when you sat behind it at events like this. This is Eggsy the Mini. I do like that. That's really clever. I might have to try and modify my uh, rear uh, boot board kit even to do something similar to this when I go to events. Sadly, a company that no longer uh, exists. They went to administration earlier this year. There's been a lot of controversy around Mini Run UK lately, so... It's a shame, they did put on some good events, but uh, also it seems like they've upset quite a few people in the process. Yeah, LED lights in the front, so... A modification I could completely understand with that. So it provides a lot more light. Yeah, just get one final look at the interior. This is glorious, just how basic it is. They've even got a little magnetic um, holder on there, I've only just noticed that. Little Mini Mayfair. B Reg, late 80s as well. 12 inch wheel, pop out rear windows. That's the one thing I do wish I had on my Mini. It's even got the very basic black bumpers. With my Mini City, it would have either come with black or grey, depending on 
what Rover felt like putting on at the time, I would imagine. But when I bought the car, it had um, chrome or stainless steel bumpers, so I just left them on. Small Manaflow exhaust. Manaflow exhaust make a good noise. The engine's been painted. It looks really nice when it's been repainted. I need to do mine at some point. The yellow is not looking as bright as it could be, and given I take it to a lot of shows, it's probably a good idea that I do paint it at some point. But a very standard grille on it, older style indicator, light lenses. Overall, this is looking like a really nice little car. So that's the back car park, it's pretty full. Let's move on to the front car park. Got a lovely Mark 1 Morris Mini, obviously a Morris Mini Minor. Like the details where you have the rear number plate that actually lifts forward, I guess, when the uh, boot is open, because that way then you can store a picnic camper in the back. Obviously, not something you can probably do these days, and probably quite illegal. But back in the 60s, when it was a bit more of a carefree attitude, not such a problem. Tiny 10 inch wheels, external door hinges, I do like those. Big old steering wheel, very basic interior. Even the uh, door catches are incredibly basic, and the handles, which is basically just a piece of string. I love how basic these original cars are. But the worst thing is about them. Austin and Morris, when they were making their, obviously, Morris Mini Minor and Austin 7 Mini respectively, they lost money on every single one. Lotus Elise heading out. I've skipped a few cars to get this one before it leaves, but some nice little F1 decals on the side. Obviously, Lotus used to be an F1 team, so they got a bit of a... a homage, shall we say, to Lotus F1 team and how many championships they've won, drivers and... Uh, constructors respectively. This singer's heading off out as well. Mm -hmm. Looks like a gazelle. Sounds lovely that. This is a 1982 Austin 1000HLE. Obviously it's a Mini. And this actually belongs to Connor who's organised this car meet today. It's a lovely little car. He's got a couple of little cup holders down there which are really nice need to get a set and so like that made up for millie tiny little wheels love the original style caps on there those are great they look really good obviously built during the british leyland era before it went over to um, austin rover it's nice i like the color on this one it's not too dissimilar i guess in style to uh, to my Mini, especially with the stripes down the side, I know they look slightly different. It's just all got a nice little touch to it. Of course this car will be very familiar to fans of TV and film. It's a Volkswagen Beetle that's made to look like Herbie. Of course that's a show plate on, it's got its real number plate on the rear bumper. But it looks great, there's lots of Beetles which have got Herbie uh, graphics and livery on there, of course 53 being the racing number of her, but it's even done in looks to be the same font or at least one that looks very very close to. It's gorgeous. Sunroof open naturally. Again Beetle would love to add one to my garage and I think this has even got like a motion sensor on it which means when you walk past it the horn starts up. Not today. It might not be a motion sensor it might just be a control someone's got somewhere and they just point out the car and it beeps. Either way, they're fun. I know we filmed it already, but V8 Aston noises, come on. The classical Fiat 500. Of course, Italy's little people's car. Got the sunroof on because they had a shortage of metal, so that's how they tackled that. And also for Italy, a sunroof, absolutely perfect. Tiny quarter lights, these cars introduced in 1957. So two whole years before we had the Mini. There was the Nuova 500, of course they had the 500 Topolino back in the uh, 30s and 40s. But yeah, again, very simple engineering. One dial, very few switches. This provides people a lot of pleasure these days. Both people like me. I really like the 500. Let's go and have a look at its cute little face. Definitely one side to the future garage. And look, it's even got a number plate that's very similar to my name. Maybe it's a sign. 
Maybe we should get one. Should we get one, Genevieve? That's a yes, then. She doesn't dissuade me from buying cars, she just encourages me to buy more. <laughs> Lotus Esprit Turbo. Of course, these cars made very well known from their appearance in the James Bond film, especially as a submarine and in white. Yeah, very low seating position in this, very short, stubby gear stick. Definitely gives you an impression of sportiness. Mid engine as well. I think these were supplied as a V8. I've seen a few of these lately, but I always look at it and point out that I absolutely love the fact that the Lotus logo is imprinted into the rear bumper. Twin exit exhaust lights. I think these lights on these cars actually come from one of those, a Rover SD1, but they made it work really well with the uh, Esprit. Porsche 911 with yellow brake calipers, getting quite a bit of attention, of course. There's a newer model next to it, 52 Reg. Next to that, Rover SD1 3500 V8. I think we saw this one at Radwood recently as well. Love the classical style Rover badge on the front. Let's have a quick look. Wheel trims look really good. It's even got a tow bar for telling goodness. Yeah, the green paint on this looks really very, very nice. Supporting other YouTubers as well. Like the dashboard on it and how easy it is to move from right hand drive to left hand drive. You just literally pick it up and move it on to the other side. That's why the vent cover for the passenger is located in the middle so they can just move the steering wheel over. Very simple engineering but they turn it into a bit of a design feature. In the rear car park is Eggsy the Mini, which is a Mini in white, and on the front is a Mini in white called Degsy Mini. Tell me that's not confusing. <laughs> little old timey camera there, Canon. I like the custom pillow on there, from the Isle of Wight to Rugby. Oh, I wonder if this one's coming to the Isle of Wight adventure later in the year. Uh, little fuel bib. That's something I need to look at getting for my Mini, actually. Union Jack badge on there. Third rear brake light. Quite simply added, but clearly works. We've seen a lot of Peugeot 106 and 306 rallies lately at Radwood, but this is something different. It's Peugeot 205 Rally, which is being absolutely swamped in little flies. Wow, I've never seen that many flies on the car before. <laughs> Peugeot Talbot Sport, or Talbot, depending on where you're from. Left-hand drive, so probably imported from France. I imagine this car is quite a bit of fun. So 1.3, 1.8, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, loving the graphics on this. Some of the put on the 106 when that was developed Great little car. Love the way that the 205 drives. I can see exactly why they were really popular cars back in their day. Simple layout dashboard. A very light, very fun car. 2005 Mini Cooper S. Of course, a little bit different from the classic Minis we got here, which arguably are quite basic in comparison. This is a lot more modern and loaded with tech. It's even got an automatic gearbox. An MGA 1600. It looks quite cramped in there, doesn't it? Not a lot of room. But it's quite typical of classical British sports cars. Single speaker in the middle of the dashboard. Love the detail around that. Chrome gauges as well. In the little switch down there. Short stubby gear stick as well. A bit of uh, parcel shelf space I guess in the back and a battery cutoff switch as well. Traditional wing mirrors. Love the styling of the MGA. This Mini Cooper belonging to OJL Photos as it can be found on Instagram. It's like a special edition celebrating the London 2012 Olympics. It's a very clean looking car. It's got a few little graphics over it. Obviously Union Jack style graphic. The black graphic going over the top as well. And the custom registration. Yeah, it's a very, very clean looking car this one. Aftermarket wheels. Who are they made by? 1552. Quite a well known brand when it comes to the aftermarket wheel scene. Quite popular amongst Ford fans. 17 inch wheels as well, so quite large. This is Jokes Garage Cafe's own vehicle, Cobb the Comma Van. It's a Comma Cobb Van. Lego on the side as well. Lovely interior. Goes to quite a lot of shows in the local area, especially at the uh, British Motor Museum, which is about 10 minutes in that rough direction. It's a lovely looking little van, this. 
Marco's got um, advertisement for Facebook and Instagram, which of course you can find Jill's Garage Cafe on. All the details you possibly need. So if you're willing to come here and you're not quite sure about something, give them a call or contact them through their website. But yeah, glorious little van this. We really like the centre binnacle. Again, quite simply made for, I would imagine, changing over the steering wheel from right-hand drive to left-hand drive. It's very reminiscent of other vehicles um, of the time, especially commercials, like obviously vans and trucks and things. It's very simple, but very uh, very practical and useful. Lovely little Morris Minor. Got RAC badges and AA badges on the front. Of course, got the very typical extra width in the middle, which made the car actually look a little bit better. It was meant to be about four inches narrower, but they decided to change that and add that and make it a bit wider. So it actually sits right now. I think um, Alec Isagonis, who designed the car, wasn't too fond of that idea when it first happened, but uh, maybe slowly came round to it. He didn't like other people messing with his designs. I mean, he didn't like uh, necessarily this particular version, because this is the facelifted version of the Morris Minor. The original ones had the headlights a bit lower down. But because of safety, they had to raise them up, and I like it again, just didn't like that so much. But it's a good job that I do. I like this face of the uh, of the Morris Minor very, very nicely. A Lanchester. I think these are made not too far away from here, actually. Daimler and Lanchester Owners Club. Again, very simply laid out, but very well done interior on this, I have to say. Don't know much about Lanchester as a brand. I haven't really seen many of their cars, not really experienced many of their cars, either at either shows or just out and about. Seems to have got a little wooden chart down behind the wheel, which is probably a sensible choice. Tiny rear windows as well, look at those. This is not an AC Cobra. It looks like it, and it's a very convincing model, but it's actually one of these aftermarket companies that make them look a lot like the Cobra. So it's got mini indicator lenses on the front again quite easy and quite simple to get a hold of no oh, hello dog <laughs> 47 i think it's actually called a python roadster oh, look in there automatic gearbox i think it's 1979 ish 1980 quite a i guess a latish car big old exhaust makes a good noise heard it pull up Handbrake located just down to the left-hand side of the seat of the billet dashboarding. But I have to say, it looks really very convincing as an AC Cobra. I know it isn't. I know it's a, a kit car or, again, one of these aftermarket vehicles. But I like it. Something like this actually uh, makes it affordable for people who maybe want to own an AC Cobra but really can't afford to in their day-to-day -day lives. So I have no problem with kit cars at all. As it's heading out, Volvo V70. Lovely practical goodness with that. I know Genevieve's a big fan of Volvo cars. Speaking of which there, she's chatting with a couple of people, uh, presumably about minis, possibly even about our social, which is coming up in uh, three weeks time as of filming this video. Might be a bit sooner, might even happen by the time you see this video. Who knows? Depends on schedules. Starting to leave a little bit there. But the last very, well, last car we've got here is this D-Wipered Mini. Big old gear stick on it. I think that's quite a Japanese thing to do, to have a gear stick of that size. Mini Cooper S. 2005. So, at least a tiny bit older than the other Mini that's over there. Great little thing. And of course... How could I not really forget, but how could I leave her out of the video? Millie the Mini, probably the dirtiest car here. She's travelled quite a few miles this weekend, really for Radwood and for this meet. Wearing her new plates with pride as well from Euro Plates in Stoke-on-Trent. So if you're looking for press metal number plates, give them a, well, a call or an email or something. Woodroom Stream Wheel, that's the one I mentioned earlier on. You get needs a bit of a clean. All of our stuff in the back for the weekend. Didn't bring the caravan with us this time. But I think really that brings a close to 
our walk around here at the mildly interesting meet at Jilts Garage Cafe. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, comment down below, let me know which is your favourite car here. And of course, if you want to see more car-based content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I've been Jake, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Until then, farewell.